the truth behind the sitcoms. The Partridge Family was based on the true story of a single mother who joined her children to form a rock and roll band. Even before the first show aired in 1970, the producers released a song recorded by the show's young leading man. I Think I Love You became a smash number one hit, helping to put the Partridge Family at the top of the ratings and launching David Cassidy into the world as a genuine superstar and music phenomenon. Here's a triple E ticket. <laughs> you know, want to come on this ride with me? Here, we'll hop in the limo, we'll get in the private jet, and then, you know, we'll go in, there'll be like 40, 50,000 screaming girls. You go back to the hotel, you'll have as many of them as you want. But the fame and success that brought him love from millions of complete strangers only drove him further from the one person whose love and admiration he really sought. His father, Broadway musical actor Jack Cassidy. David Cassidy is my stepson, and um, I married his father when he was seven years old. Well, I mean, both my mother and I both were abandoned by my father. He split, and it was like, see you later. I think he blamed me. He thought I was the wicked stepmother, you know, that caused it. Understand there were 15 years of he wasn't around, and rarely around. And um, my mother once sent him a dime in the mail to call me. It's pretty awful, you know. My dad was having a lot of problems with my fame and um, with our success uh, because he wasn't having it. Being married to Shirley Jones and her winning Academy Awards and getting starring roles in movies and him not being able to get a job and his son becoming David Cassidy. We went to see him uh, in one of the big stadiums. Jack was so disturbed, he said, you know, he's really a monkey in a cage. Who wants to be that? He wanted more for David than that. I don't want to be a star. I want to be a, I wanted my father's respect, I think, more than anything. That respect and affection would be something David would keep looking for most of his life. But the success of the Partridge family offered him several temporary solutions. In the beginning, it was new and it was wonderful. It was exciting. He had girls all over the place. If he saw a cute little, little girl out there, one he liked, then he'd say, okay, come on in. You know, he was very eager to, uh, you know, be opened up sexually and, and, and physically and mentally and in every other way. Susan and Shirley weren't shocked. You know, they knew who I was. I may have just turned my, turned my back to it, and I probably did. Um, I figured if that's what he wants to do, that's what he's going to do. It's nothing I've ever been proud about. He wanted to experience it all. I was a, a good person. I was a good human being. I just was wild and 21 and living the life of everybody, I think, at that age, ma every male dreamt of. I don't think there was uh, a lot of drug use on the set. I mean, sometimes David Cassie would open his dressing room door and just this waft of smoke would come out. I wasn't doing drugs. I couldn't possibly. I've never, ever been able to justify it. But, you know, it could have just been a special effect. Can I, can I tell you? He's full of I never really lost my temper with Danny because I felt so sorry for him. What did we used to call him? Ah, there's the onion in the rose patch. Something like that, I don't know. I know they called me a 40-year-old midget. David Cassidy called me a dirty, greasy little pizza. He never showered. He never, he never took a bath. Thanks, David. Sometimes we'd have to take him and bathe him right on the set, you know. But it was sad because nobody was telling him. This was a little kid we're dealing with. He had a lot of problems at home. My, my family life compared closer with the Manson family life than with the Partridge family life. I spent a lot of weekends with all of the cast members of the Partridge family. I'd take him home on weekends to play with my kids and take him on different outings that I would take my children on. He was a mess. Danny was very early knowing about the birds and the bees. My sexual awakening was on the show. And acting it out, by the way. Well, everybody caught me. I was, I was peeking in on Susan Day while she was changing her clothes. And I wasn't subtle about it. I was on the roof of her dressing room, leaning over and looking down above the curtains. The first uh, encounter I ever had was actually on the set of The Partridge Family. I was like 13, maybe 14. She was a grown woman. She was <laughs> embarrassed. She was there to see David Cassidy. And David Cassidy apparently already had a whole room full of groupies as it was and just didn't have the time. I like to say that uh, I gave that woman the best 30 seconds of her life. The outrageous rumors about Danny Bonaducci didn't really start until years after the Partridge family ended. 
There have been some incredible things written about me in the papers, wild and torrid stories. The problem is they're all <laughs> true. I got in a fight with a transvestite in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, he lost. Severely. <laughs> but you know what, I'd like to make it clear that I didn't get in a fight with him because he's a transvestite. I'd have kicked that guy's ass no matter what he was wearing. He had it coming. Then I see the cops. I went, okay, the guy from the Partridge family just beating the bejesus out of a drag queen. This is gonna make hard copy. I gotta go. And I jumped in my car, there was a big police chase. It was a huge drag. It was a huge drag. Oh, pardon the pun. <laughs> David Cassidy's initial contract for the Partridge family paid him only $600 per episode. I was not very concerned about material possessions at 19. I mean, for what? What did I need? I had a stereo, you know, I had a guitar, and I had a job, and I knew I could stay paying my rent for another year. But by the end of the first year, his fan club was larger than the Beatles or Elvis. Fortunately for David, he was underage when he signed the contract, making it invalid. Renegotiating landed him the then unheard of sum of $4,000 per episode. That didn't matter to me because within six months, I was making thousands and thousands of dollars doing concerts. And within a year, I was making twenty-five dollars to $50,000 a night. So it didn't even matter to me what I was making on my television series because there was money coming in from everywhere, you know. And I didn't, I never count, I didn't care. I didn't care about the fame, I didn't care about the money. Honest to God, I never knew how much money I had. A bank manager years later said to me, do you know at one time you had $2 million in your checking account? Coming up, David Cassidy and the tragedy that almost ended his career. She had a heart condition, she got so excited and she died. These things happen, and not my fault.